Hi, welcome back. Our next speaker is a hardware hacker turned entrepreneur. His project, Neurobytes, was a best product finalist for the 2015 Hackaday Prize, and he's since parlayed that into an ed tech company receiving funding from the NSF, among others. Um, but today, he's here as a hardware hacker to show us a live, without a net, fine pitch soldering of his uh, geeky bling, the cyborg ring. Please join me in welcoming to the Hackaday Supercon stage, Zach Fredeen. Thank you. Um, so the, the ring is a project that I've been working on for a few years, and it looks like this. So it's got little LEDs on it. Um, do we have a camera around here? Yeah, do you want to uh, get close? We're going to get like a close-up camera, so we're good. Anyone who's doing a live soldering demo, uh, stop drinking coffee now. So. Do you want to come hold my yeah. hold my phone? Will that work? <laughs> yeah, better. Uh, Learn your thing. Uh, yeah, we double phone it. Yeah, <laughs> let's chat over that way. All right, so um, this project, if you can see, if you can see here, um, it's constructed out of two printed circuit boards, um, one on the top and one on the bottom, um, and it's using a technique called cordwood construction, which um, kind of throws back to the 50s when integrated circuits weren't really a thing and you needed to have high density component assemblies. You'd, you'd string axial components between a pair of PCBs. Uh, so I've done that with uh, service mount components, um, and the main reason this works is because I'm using AT Tiny uh, 85 microcontroller, and the the the, uh, the 20 pin QFN version of that is four millimeters across, and uh, most importantly, it doesn't use any of the pins on the sides, so you can pretty much get all the I/O from from two sides of it. Um, and co coincidentally, uh, four millimeters is twice, uh, you know, a 0805 resistor, so that makes everything work. Um, I'll make it light one more time. I'm not very good at writing firmware, so. That's all it does. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today, um, this is a kit. It's, uh, it's designed for you to make and not be scared of soldering, because soldering's why we're all here today, hopefully. Um, and uh, I want to demonstrate what I would say is kind of the weirdest and most kind of challenging part of the ring construction, which is when you're at the point that you have one circuit board populated with, uh, with the resistor columns and the, uh, the QFN. Uh, one of the resistors broke off. That's fine. Um, those are structural resistors. They're they're 10 mega ohms each, so we pretend they're insulators. Um, and then you you take the other half of the ring and you you join those together. And it's a, the 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 QFN is a 0.5 millimeter pitch, so you know tolerances are on the order of 100 microns. Um, and it's it's imminently doable without magnification, with even with coffee hands, um, as we'll hopefully demonstrate. And the reason it's hooked up to this programming thing, um, I want to hopefully then flash the microcontroller and show that I actually landed the joints right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinch the ring between our thumb and forefinger, like so. I'm not seeing the screen, so I don't know how well you guys can see this. Um, okay. And so what I've done is I've kind of arranged it in my fingers so that um, I've like s kind of pushed my thumb and forefinger forward, so when I'm relaxed, the ring is kind of held in compression, so it's kind of being held held together. And then to adjust the alignment, I can just rotate my fingers relative to each other very finely. Um, I'm going to take one very close look at this to make sure it's aligned properly. 
And um, yeah, I think that's good. So what we'll do is we'll take uh, a syringe full of a gel flux and we will just uh, put a ton of flux right where we're trying to do our joint. We'll double check alignment one more time. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm, I think we're in good shape. Um, and when I do soldering, I almost never am holding solder. Um, I let the iron do that. So just let the iron hold your molten solder ball and take your energy to keep things aligned. Um, my iron is a, a Heiko. Um, it's at 790 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and it has an, a 16th inch chisel tip. So we will uh, get a little solder on our iron, and then it's just uh, like that. And I think we're good. We might have a bridged connection. Can you, can you, see, that? Can you see that? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, to, sorry. Is that uh, is that good? Can you sort of say that? Yeah. Good. Stuff's pretty small. Okay, so now the ring is in like an incredibly delicate state. So what we want to do is uh, dab some flux on the other uh, the resistor columns and just tap those. Like so, um, and that should be it. Like now, now we would be doing other parts of the assembly, but uh, we don't really have time for that. Um, so I am going to instead hook my programmer up. I have this. I have this really stupid breakout board for AVR programmers I made that breaks the data lines out into little little speakers. So when the code goes through, you can hear it. And uh, oh. Uh, so now we would go through some debugging. Unfortunately, that's usually what happens. <laughs> uh, I'll probably go over to the badge hacking area and like de debug this a little bit and try to get it to work. Um, but that's that's your own idea. I can usually build one of these rings in about an hour to an hour and a half, um, and it's very relaxing and very enjoyable. Um, so I'll I'll leave you with a few little bits of information if you want to build a ring of your own. Can you see that? Okay. I wrote these when I was sitting over there. So called the Cyborg Ring. Uh, it's uh, all Creative Commons, um, and it's uh, certified by the Open Harbor uh, Association, which everybody should do. It's so cool. Um, GitHub.org, exactly, uh, Cyborg Ring. Uh, Hackaday.io project, if you want to kind of learn more about where it all came from. Um, and then I, I, I put this on here. Um, Elliot alluded to this. Um, this conference has changed my life in ways that I don't think I can express adequately on stage. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that there's a critical mass of people that click this link on a regular basis. So this is this is the shortcut to seeing what the latest new projects are on Hackaday.io. Um, and I have this bookmarked and I look at it every week. So every time anybody posts any projects, I always am guaranteed to see them because I just keep scrolling until I see the one that I remember from last time. You can't read it. Hackaday.io slash projects question mark sort equals date. Um, it's easier to navigate to that. This is kind of a shorthand. Um, so do that. Do that every week. Do that every month. Help build this community of people interested in projects. Thank you.